the marketing process essentially starts with the steps that you're going to take to market your business. And when you think about the steps you're going to take to market your business, you really want to think about what type of outcome do you have in mind? And kind of like where we touched on with the SMART goals, of course, I know the outcome is you want to obtain clients, but let's try and be more specific about what type of outcome, like how many clients, what types of clients. You also want to think about where these clients are located, what types of facilities or healthcare systems are they in, so that when you're actually out there marketing and talking with clients, you're not kind of all over the place. Healthcare is big everywhere. So you don't want to spend your time talking to dialysis clinics when you actually don't intend to staff at dialysis centers. Other things to consider when you talk about the marketing process includes ways to market your business. I already touched on one of the ways that we're marketed to, and that's definitely through print, um, through media, videos, social media, partnerships. And referrals are ways that we're marketed to, as well as ways that we can actually market our business. And I'll touch on all of those um, throughout the presentation. Another important step in creating your marketing process is making sure that you have an effective strategy. And essentially a strategy for me is just like, how are you going to get it done? What are the steps, the things you're going to do, the things that you need to have in place if you know, if you require it, the people that you need to be in place to make sure that this gets done. And in doing so, you also want to make sure that your strategy is doable. So if you have a tight budget, you want to consider that when you're putting together how you're going to strategize. So if you're not working with a million dollar budget, you shouldn't actually putting you shouldn't actually be putting together a marketing plan that requires a heavy budget. And I always try to when I think about marketing, consider my everyday life as many of us are transitioning to from employee to employer. So many of us still work full time or part time or in some capacity, maybe PRN. So I think it's important to make it something that you can do on a regular basis that doesn't necessarily interfere. Early on, you do want to kind of go strong and heavy with marketing your business, but once you kind of get yourself in a routine, make it something that you do on a regular basis, but it's not interrupting your day-to-day -day lifestyle. And then finally, the last two things are evaluating. So with any process, whether it's a marketing process or recruitment process, you always want to put yourself in a position to evaluate, is it working? Is it effective? Is it giving me the results that I'm looking for? And a great time period to consider when doing that is about 30 to 60 days. And like I mentioned before in the presentation, I'll talk about some tools and steps that you can use to actually evaluate what you're doing, make the right changes, as well as whether or not what you're doing is actually effective. And then of course, if what you're doing is effective, you wanna repeat it, as well as not only repeat it, but you also wanna consider perfecting it. So if you're doing something, and I'm going to go back into my example about the iPhone, the iPhone has done an amazing job of perfecting something that works. So for the most part, I think my first iPhone was probably the iPhone 4. The iPhone actually looks very similar over the last eight or ten years, but they've done and made small differences besides the actual data piece, but just like the look and feel of it to make it more efficient, to make it easier. It's a lot slimmer than it was when it was a six. You know, um, it's a little bit wider, but not too wide. Um, it's a little sleeker, so it looks a little bit more appealing. So those are all ways that they have found something that works, which is a cell phone that people enjoy and use often and have that brand management, but also they've taken out the time to perfect beyond just the internal pieces. They've also taken out the time to perfect and um, make changes with the aesthetics. So here are some questions I want you to consider. So with every presentation that I do, just in case you guys haven't realized, I always want to ask questions of you guys. I always want you to be thinking about different things as you embark on this journey of becoming a healthcare staffing agency owner so that 
when the question actually applies, because not always is the question applicable at the time you actually have an answer. So here are some of the questions I want you to consider. So you can either write these down or like I mentioned before, they'll be saved onto the group presentation as well as this video will get saved tomorrow. So a question to consider is when you're thinking about marketing your business, who's your audience? Who are you trying to market to? You also want to think about where are they located? Um, how easily accessible they are. And this one, number three, is so key. Working in healthcare, getting in touch with the right person that can make the decisions for you to yay or nay a contract for you is so key. So you want to really have a strategy in place where you're spending the least amount of time talking to the people who can't say yes or no to you and really moving through the system or through the process or chain of command to get to the person who can tell you yes or no. As well, you want to think about what is your communication plan? Are you going to email? Are you going to phone call? Are you going to do a phone call, then an email? Um, are you going to send out flyers or any sort of um, print um, communication about your agency. As well, if you use a marketer, which a lot of um, up and coming healthcare staffing agencies do, or someone to assist you with the marketing, who will be doing that, or what on what will be what will they be doing on your team? So who will be doing it, and what will they be doing on the team? So if, for instance, you decide to um, have someone in your family who's really, really good at social media set up your social media platforms. You want to be really clear as far as like how much you want them to do. Do they just want you to do the basics where you just open up an account or do you want them to actually put content onto your social media platforms for your business? Or do you want them to run the whole social media platform for you? So that's something to consider as well as how will you track your progress, which we touched on a little bit, as well, what are your expected results and how will you evaluate success? So the last two questions I want you to think about are important. As small business owners, we don't have the same bandwidth as a bigger agency. So we don't have the ability to have like a marketing team or even to have um, multiple individuals working for us. Very early on, we're that. I'm the marketing team, I'm the marketer, I'm the point of contact, I'm the person that's going to evaluate the results. So a good way to do that as far as condensing your time is to really have a strong marketing plan in place that you can easily move through. Something very similar, and I'll save one into the group, to the SMART goals where you can say, hey, Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to make phone calls on Tuesday, Thursday. I'm going to do follow-up emails. Based on the response that I get, I'll evaluate in 30 days the outcome. So another tool, which is what I'll actually leave into the group, is you're creating a marketing or SWOT analysis. So this tool is really a great thing to use because it allows you to consider all the possible variables prior to implementing your marketing plan. And when we talk about variables, we think about things that are outside of your control, things that, you know, you didn't consider. Many times you don't always consider, you know, in certain regions, you know, it's, you know they have higher or lower needs with regards to staffing. Um, in specific areas, for instance, where there's a lot of snow, they may have high needs for staffing, but it might be very challenging to recruit staff to go out there. So that's something that you want to consider that may not be a case in a state like a Florida where you have pretty much great weather all year round. As well, you want to think about what areas you as a business might have some weaknesses. And some weaknesses that just come off the top of my head from a marketing standpoint of view is just experience. And a great way to flip that around is, yeah, you may not be an agency owner who has years and years of experience, but you have more than enough experience as a healthcare professional. So you've worked in these settings. You understand how scheduling works. You understand the concept of travel nurses and staff nurses and kind of the intermingling of the two to, you know, to provide support 
um, and patient care to healthcare systems and facilities. And then, of course, threats and opportunities. That could be a, a variety of things. Um, some people may consider other agencies in states where there's a big or medium-sized agency that's kind of gobbled up all the contracts, that could be considered a threat. But it also could be an opportunity um, where there may be some states where there's multiple agencies, where there's opportunities there as well. Um, next, when you think about marketing, you want to think about what types of marketing tips or tools are effective. So effective types of marketing and healthcare staffing. So there's so many different types of marketing that's out there. You really want to focus your time and attention on those things that are effective. So there's no need to repeat. There's really no need to repeat the cycle. You use what other agencies use. The difference would be that you're an OSA, as well as the difference would be that you bring your own unique take on the process. So some of the effective types of marketing and healthcare staffing include social media. I'll touch on that a little bit. Searches, YouTube videos, websites, blogs. Um, they're all digital opportunities that many, many agencies use, and even more so now with COVID-19, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, many more agencies are using Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, um, Twitter to communicate their openings than they maybe did a year or so prior. Like their presence on social media has increased substantially, partially because more of us are at home. Even healthcare workers, more of us for different reasons, whether it's that we can't work during this time or it might be a situation where um, we're taking care of loved ones or children, so we're at home. Um, you have more you have a little bit more limited access, so more of us are getting our are getting information from um, social media and things of that nature. So when you think about marketing, you want to kind of think about things that are already working. So your website, which of course is a given, and I touched on you know you guys who are working with Katie to set up your website. That's going to always be something that you need. But when you want to make a connection with a lot of businesses or fellow businesses, using social media really gets you a lot of exposure. And websites like LinkedIn, a lot of people don't realize the value of LinkedIn. And um, one of our clients reached out to us via LinkedIn. They saw that we staff in New Mexico and they reached out and wanted to find out about services that we can offer. We get phone calls all the time from places that you wouldn't think would notice us because we have a LinkedIn profile, we have a Facebook profile, we have an Instagram profile. So you never really know where people are looking and now that more people are working from home, you really want to make sure that you have a presence in all those platforms. And you can do videos. If you have a website, most, of, most people are um, set up through Google. So your website can be searched through Google, a blog. You know, if you're in a particular niche market, such as labor and delivery or um, cardiac or critical care, healthcare staffing, a blog would be a great resource because it will provide a little bit of more information about how you can accommodate a client's staffing needs um, under these circumstances where people who have cardiac or critical care issues or who are having a baby still need to get care. So you can address how you're, how you're kind of preparing your staff or how you're educating your staff on making sure that they're staying safe during these times for um, those types of niche specialties. You can do promotions. Um, not, I think it was today I saw a promotion by a well-named staffing agency on Instagram, an agency that I follow on Instagram, and they were doing a giveaway of a variety of different prizes. And a lot of times they, they focus their giveaways around getting more followers. So the more followers you have, the more presence you have, um, 
and the more people hear about you and or share you um, within their circles.